Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about what has been one of the most requested features for Roland to add to the SP404. And they've done it, they've added live looping into the Mark II. So today I wanna go over what it is and four ways to use it in pretty much any workflow, whether that's with your DAW, DAWless, or even just standalone with the SP404 with samples or sound generator, which is another awesome feature that they added in the 4.04 update. into these couple of different methods, I wanna quickly go over how to use the live looper and also some of the quirks I've discovered along the way and what you need to know to make the most out of using the live loopers. First of all, it's replaced or can replace skip back mode. So to change which mode Mark does, you hit shift and enter. And then I've got it on looper, so it's gonna show enable skip back, looper will reset. But if you're in skip back or this is the first time you're using the SP in this way, it'll say enable looper. So you just hit okay and you're good to go. Then if you hit mark you're in the live looper now normally there's a click but depending on how you route your click in the settings you won't hear it so that's what I'm doing here so to change how the click is being used whether it's only in the headphones or coming out fully you just need to go to shift 13 and go to system go to the second setting on the top click go to output assign and off means it will go into basically a cue or your headphones if you click it and go to on it will come out any of your main outputs so we'll leave that off because you don't need to hear a click for this whole episode okay so once you're in the looper, you get a couple options. You see the measures. So you can do free, which is up to 16 seconds max. You can do one bar, two bars, or four bars. Now, I guess there's a limitation with the memory or something on the 404, but free will get you up to 16 seconds. So for auto trig, you can either shut it off, which means as soon as you hit record, it starts recording, or you can turn it to on, which I prefer, which means you hit it and it's record weight, similar to the weight mode on sample pads. So I like to do the auto trig so that it's just waiting. As soon as I start hitting something, it will start recording as you'll see right here. So let's delete that. And all you do is just hit record to stop and delete to delete it. And that will empty everything. If you want to undo a specific overdub, I'll show you how to do that in a second. Okay, so a couple other features that you'll see on the bottom is feedback, which is the duration of your dubs and how long they'll play. So if you put it to 100, it'll just keep playing endlessly. But if you start lowering it, it will slowly fade out. Then if you go to level, that's how loud the recording is going to be when you record it. Now, if you hold shift, you can see a couple other options. The bus that the loop is in you can switch what bus is going in but this does not necessarily affect the pads when you're recording because you can have effects on the pads but that means the final signal of the looper is going into this bus and you can switch to dry bus one bus two or go back to looper routing you can do just like when you're recording external in or mix we'll keep it on mix right now and then BPM you can set on either menu and then if you hold shift still you can also change the metronome volume and so you just click and move Move the enter knob to get that change. All right, so we've got everything we need there. Let's record something in and then I'll show you how to undo the most recent overdub. So all we need to do is just go to, we'll just do one bar for, for this. Hit record so it's on record weight. Now we're gonna start with just a hi-hat and then we'll start overdubbing so you can see. Now to overdub, hit resample. Okay, let's say I didn't like that take, right? Let's get out of the overdub, hit shift, undo, or pattern select, and it undoes the overdubs, or the most recent overdub. If you have multiple overdubs, it will only do the most recent one, but it's not a total undo, so you can kind of use this for mutes. If you hit shift, undo again, it actually redoes or adds it back, so you can kind of do a quick mute.
One of the big limitations in this is you can only undo the most recent overdub, but also you can't mute or shut off the different overdubs. You just everything gets baked in. Okay, so that's the basics of overdub, but I wanna go over some tips and tricks to make the most out of it because there's a lot of nuance within this looper that you can get some very interesting features. So we have this drum part already and let's get a sound on top of it and we can start exploring the bus effects and what I consider live mixing. So remember, like I mentioned, once you record something, it's in there unless you undo it. But if you start adding layer upon layer, you can't undo those. So you need to mix while you're making the idea. And one thing that you can utilize are bus effects per overdub. So I have this little piano sound. Let's put SX reverb like we already have on bus one and then let's do 404. Now what's very interesting is this is only going to affect this layer or this overdub that we're doing. So the effects that I put on, they're not affecting what's already baked into the looper because it's set to bus looper. So we can do that. Now let's say this was messy. We could do even isolator on one of these buses. So if you needed to get out bass on it, you could put isolator on one of those buses and clean it up a little bit. I'm gonna keep it with the 404 and SX Reverb. Another really cool one is Kodama, and I've got all kinds of lists for what effects are great for what in my SP404 cheat sheet. It's also got a whole section on the Live Looper, so if you need to get a text version or a quick reference for everything we're talking about today or in anything else related to the SP404, check it out. Channel members get it as part of the membership, but you can grab it here. Another trick you can do is if you wanna layer the drums separately, you can actually get different effects on it. So like, this kick has some really weird noise at the end so i could eq basically and we're gonna just delete that part we have let's drop this down to let's say 85 okay so now we can take that off or let's say we can get some low end out of the kick So now we've cleaned up these drums a little bit better. So there's a nice way to kind of mix your drums. And let's say the hat too. Let's say I want to get that really gritty with that lo-fi on. So now you can hear we've got all these different effects. So now let's go back and uh, let's get, why don't we do that Juno chorus again? I like that. And let's add SX reverb. There we go. Okay, and then maybe we can get that bass part back in. Okay, now, you'll see it's locked when it's first playing back on this play rate, but let's mess around with that. So we can speed it up. get that real slowed down vibe and if we switch looper to let's say bus one but you can use both effects so you can get some really interesting sounds off of this play rate it's one of my favorite things to do is just record a loop and then drop or raise the play rate and see what happens because once you've got a sound you really like let's go back to that sped up version Yeah, I like that one. So if you like that part, just hit copy and it renders out this full loop. And then, so you can loop it, get out of the live looper, and there you go. Okay, so you might be hearing that it's getting a little distorted. And one thing I've found is I think the looper still records everything through three and four, but also plays, despite being in the bus routing of looper, still plays through bus three and four. So it's similar to resampling and things like that. If you are recording parts in the looper, everything gets hit with bus three and four when it's being recorded. And then again, when it's playing, if you have something like a set and compression, it can get a little distorted and weird. So I prefer to just loop without anything on bus three and four. And then when I'm done, 
with the loops, put it on. But if you are doing this for live performance, it's something to consider. You may not be able to get bus three and four. So now let's talk about some ways to use this in whatever sort of workflow you're doing, whether it's DAW, DAWless, or just the SP by itself. As you can see, we've been doing just the SP by itself. So we'll start with that one. Really the easiest method is to just use it as a sketch pad or for quick ideas. So if you really like the loop you're building or you want to have more freedom in the performance of something you're building, every single layer you do, you could export as a pad. That is one way to kind of work around some of the limitations. I mean, you couldn't do this live, but you could create loops, take the individual parts and then create uh, different pads of it. So I could have this one that has everything. But then I could have one where I add another part on top and that would just be a different pad or something. Or you recreate it in the pattern sequencer. If you remember the parts, you can always go into the pattern sequencer and redo it just like this. If you wanted to, you could just recreate it in the pattern sequencer. You'd have much more flexibility with muting parts, but you don't get the really interesting live mixing type of deal because everything you put in is stuck to bus one and bus two. There's nothing getting baked in, so you're just stuck with whatever effects for anything layered in bus one or layered in bus two. The other interesting way to use the live looper, and this also works really well with the sound generator, is to use it for sound design and then copy just that and then build on top of it. I'm thinking mostly when I say this, with the play rate. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's do 78 BPM, that's fine. And we're gonna add some effects. Let's do Coda Ma as well. Okay, so we've got a sound. Let's try doing some play rate adjustment. I'm gonna just get it set to 60 BPM or thereabouts. I'm gonna copy that part in. Let's put that right there. Okay, so now we have that part put in. So let's actually make a pattern here. And since it's 60, let's go to 120, we'll double it. I'm gonna add some quantize because we're gonna do drums. I'll put it to eight, okay? Okay, now hit remain to go to TR rec mode. Now let's add a little bit of a shuffle, okay? And then we're gonna hit record because I wanna go to this hi-hat. And I wanna do some sub steps. Now let's say we wanted a bass on top too. We can play that part and go back out of pattern. All right, now we've got the part. There we go, and if I wanted to, I could then copy this and let's say I don't want any of the drums or I just want the piano. We can start the song, right? And we could have a filter, let's say, there we go. So it's a really powerful tool for starting an idea, but also sound design, because you can use that play rate to really change things around. I had a really simple idea, but by using that play rate, I got it to sound really ethereal and haunting. So I was able to get this kind of, I never make trap, but it seemed like it was calling for trap. So that's what we did. Okay, so as a live performance tool, this thing works really well. You can do it a few different ways. You can use it on top of stuff, or you can build a loop. So let's go back to that loop we were building earlier and expand on it. Okay, so now we've got the genesis of a track, right? Then maybe we want the bass in there. And so we have to kind of have your structure kind of thought of in advance if you do want to do mutes and things like that. So what we could do is now that we have that, we could start the idea maybe with the drums undone and have our little ambient bit. And then now we could do some dropouts. But then when we want to start putting in the bass, we won't be able to do that because of the overdub limitation. But let's start getting some of that in. So now that we have that in, uh, let's say that we want to start doing some effects. So let's switch over to bus one.
Finally, the last thing I wanna talk about is using it to turn your DAW into a hardware looper. So we're gonna move the camera around. Okay, so the last workflow I wanna talk about today is using your DAW or really any setup you have, whether DAWless or DAW, anything like that, as basically the ultimate partner to the SP404 for live looping. So I have my DAW with a couple of different patches I've loaded up. I've got Repro and I think I have a Diva synth as well. But basically what I wanna show is if you're connected via USB-C, this works really easily because all you have to do is just have the one cable going in. I have a full video, you can check it out up on the top right corner to make the most of USB-C when you're using the SP404 with a computer. So it's basically acting as an audio interface so I can send synth sounds, any soft synth, any drum, any sample I have in the DAW into my SP. As you can hear. So what we can do from there is use the live looper with external source on, we can get these sounds in. So I'm gonna just uh, adjust the level really quickly. Let's first get a drum sound in and you'll notice when you have external source on, it is the pads are working as a MIDI keyboard. So shut that off if you're doing internal sound. There we go. Okay, let's get a different sound on. Yeah, I like that. On this next round, we'll record that in. Okay. I really like that. And we could, if we wanted to, use the effects that were on the SP, but I have a lot of effects on the DAW, so we're using those. Now, let's do some sound design. That. So now if I wanted to, I can just play this and I can get some bass. We could go. sound but this is working so there you go there's some interesting ways that you can use your DAW as basically the ultimate sample for your SP404 I appreciate you hanging out if you want to get some sample packs all of the beats we make on the channel samples from all of those beats head to the channel members you also get all of the quick start and cheat sheet guides including the SP404 one as part of any tier of the membership it is the best way to help support the channel and that is the SP404 live looper how have you been finding it do you use it much do you find it's overhyped maybe I don't know I really like it one thing I would really like to see though is if it's possible even just two to four mute groups that you could create kind of like the I think it's the RC505 from Roland where you can turn on and off some of the overdubs because right now you're very limited with that only undo and redo the last overdub so that's what I would love to see who knows maybe that's in a 5.0 update or a future 4. Point something update let us know in the comments though how you're getting along with the live looper but one of the most underrated features of this update I think is the sound generator and we talked about it a little bit in this video but if you want to make the most of it and turn it into a polyphonic synthesizer that's got LFOs filters all that kind of stuff check out this video next thanks for watching and I'll see you next time